So let's add a sensor so that our robot doesn't run into things. We're going to take a look at how to do this by working backwards through our code. So let's take a look at the wheelie code. We've been through this before. I just want to take a look at a new listener here that's set up. And this is this range subscription. We're going to focus in on this one. Uh, if you recall, we had a set motor speeds function here that actually was the heart of setting how fast all the wheels go. Uh, and we skipped over this function, this part of the function right here that handles a governor. This is where I want to handle the, how I want to handle the sensor. All right. So I create this governor that's allowed to slow down the speed of the wheel. In the end, um, we multiply the speed of, of the left and the right motors just by this governor factor. All right. And this is driven by uh, these two attributes off of the wheelie class, self.stop and self.close. The intent is that uh, we want the wheelie to stop moving. We want the motors to turn off when uh, we're within this stop distance. And we want the wheelie to start slowing down when we're between close and stop. So if you think about that, as I get closer to uh, uh, as my my sensor says I'm closer to something, uh, then I'm going to start slowing down until finally I get within the stopping distance and then I'll stop. So it's pretty straightforward, just simply uh, uh, creating this governor from zero to one, uh, which is how much distance I have left until I stop and then multiply each wheel by that percentage. All right, uh, so let's take a look at the stop start. That's all the way up here in the initializer uh, where I set the self dot uh, stop and close function. So uh, as you remember in, in ROS, we're using standard units. So this is meters. So when I, when I get within 0.3 meters, I'm gonna start slowing down. And when, when I get within uh, 0.1 meters, 10 centimeters, I'm going to actually stop. So I shouldn't get any closer than that. Um, okay, so now the question is, how do I actually recognize how far away I am? And that's with this callback we just saw, uh, which is the range callback. So you can see here, uh, this has, there's a range callback that's a range subscription, create subscription. Here's the type of object we get, which is a range object. Uh, and then that's going to listen on the range topic. Uh, and the callback itself is pretty straightforward. Once again, um, it just takes a uh, message, as we saw before, uh, and accepts the range property off of that me message and sets that to uh, this wheelie's distance attribute. Then it sets the motor speeds, which will invoke the governor, as we saw before. Okay, so we record the distance here from this message, uh, from this range object, uh, from the range attribute within the range message in this callback. So now we have to find out where that range topic is actually set up. That's in another process. Uh, that's actually set up in this sensors.py script. So let's take a look at that. This is going to run as a separate process that creates a separate node uh, that holds the range topic. Uh, this code should look very familiar to what we just saw with the wheelie node. Uh, however, uh, it's using a different uh, a, a different object. It's using that that sensor object instead. Uh, so again, working backwards within the main of this, we see how uh, in the main I create a sensor object. We'll have to figure out what that is, uh, but it looks a little bit familiar where it takes the actual pins off of our device um, and it spins uh, that node. So this must be a node. Uh, and if we take a look at the sensor class, yeah, it's a node, a subclass of the node class from uh, the ROS client library. Um, and if we look at the initializer here, um, there is 
and uh, a range message that's created and that is also used with this ultrasonic distance sensor all right so let's start by looking at the range message uh, that's the type of message that we just saw being received by our robot uh, there's a few constants in here that we have to set up uh, that has uh, what's the min and max range that I can measure and what the angle is and so on um, and that's all included in this range message the only thing we took off of the range message however was the actual distance that it measured um, and if we look at the callback Here's our callback function here that just simply calls the measure function off of our ultrasonic distance sensor. We'll have to see how that distance sensor is created, uh, but um, I just, again, just have that sensor actually measure what my distance is. Let's take another look at this initializer here. Uh, the initializer, after uh, everything's set up, calls this start function which uses this create timer All right so um, if I notice this structure is a little bit different from what we saw before because instead of creating a listener that responds every time I get a call back uh, every time I receive a message uh, this case we're creating a publisher uh, and the publisher uh, is going to publish periodically uh, so it doesn't initially start publishing I create all the infrastructure I need all the setup that I need up here in the initializer but when I call the start function this calls the create timer method of the node class so now within ROS I'm going to use the ROS timer uh, again those timers are going to be using uh, when my node is spinning uh, so that timer is going to uh, at this frequency, so uh, every one over frequency second, so the, in this case it's 10 times a second, um, it's going to execute the distance callback, which we just saw the distance callback just looks to uh, the uh, figure out what the distance reading is off of our distance sensor. Okay, so again, we're working a little bit backwards here, just showing you how to reverse engineer uh, code. We saw that our robot listens on this range topic uh, and on this uh, distance range topic. And here we see this range topic getting published within this code and it publishes a range object uh, and it publishes that based on this timer. Last thing we want to do is actually take a look at this ultrasonic distance sensor object. What is that? This one, yeah, again, this is similar to what we saw with the motors. This specifically works with the Raspberry Pi. It does not require ROS. It's something that, that gets included later on as we set up our ROS node. Uh, so this is uh, tied to the, to the electronics of putting uh, the robot together. This code is all based on uh, what's documented here in this PDF document for the Spark Fun, which is uh, the kit where which we used to build this robot. It's also documented uh, if you look up that distance sensor. If you use a dis different distance sensor, you'll see similar documentation on how to access it within the Raspberry Pi. Essentially, I have a echo uh, pin and a trigger pin. I throw the trigger pin high. Uh, and then shortly afterwards, the echo is sent out, and I have to listen for how long uh, until it receives the echo back, and that'll tell me how far away the robot is. So this is the code, again, that comes pretty much uh, straightforward, comes from the documentation that comes with our sensor. Just to take a quick look at the physical components of the sensor, uh, here's a close-up shot of, of what the sensor is that's connected to our robot. There's a power supply, high voltage and ground, uh, and here's the trigger and the echo pins that I connect to the pins of my Raspberry Pi. And again, when I send the trigger pin high uh, for at least, I believe it's 20 uh, microseconds, then shortly afterwards, 
the transmitter over here is going to send out an ultrasonic pulse and then it's going to wait uh, until that pulse is received back over at this um, microphone essentially over here. All right, so this sends and this receives and then uh, after the trigger, shortly after the trigger is uh, set high, the pulse is sent out and when it's sent out the echo goes high and echo stays high until it's received back. So you'll see that emulated in the code. All right, so we've got all our code put together uh, and we've got it uh, all plugged into the robot. I'm going to go ahead and start the robot up uh, with all the nodes that we want. So the first one that I'm going to want to set up here uh, is to set is to uh, start up that sensor uh, node. So I'll let that start spinning uh, and then I'm going to take another prompt and I'm going to start to start up the robot itself. The robot's going to be listening on that sensor topic to find out how far away it is. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to run my Joy node once again on my laptop. Okay, so everything's all put together. I have three separate processes running. Uh, one on my laptop, that's uh, where my joystick is connected to. Uh, and then two on my robot, one that's just for the robot sensor and then one that controls the wheels. All right, so let's see if we can run into things or if our sensor is now working to prevent us from hitting stuff. Okay, so let's see how this performs. We'll take a look first, just simply driving the robot around a little bit. You see that's working out fine. Uh, you see I have a computer set up as an obstacle in the middle of the course here. All right, we're gonna drive a little bit and see it's working okay. Now I'm gonna try and run into that computer. As you see, I'm trying to go full force, doesn't work. I can still twist. That works out fine. I just can't run into it. So there you have it, folks. We've put together our own robot using only open source software. You've learned how to use ROS, the robot operating system, how to control things with your Raspberry Pi, how to add sensors onto your robot, put it all together into an event-driven model. So it's been great having you. I uh, look forward to hearing a lot more about your robot stories. Again, my name is Sid Faber. I'm from the robotics team at Canonical, the company that produces Ubuntu. Feel free to reach out to Canonical Robots if you have any questions to follow up.